there comes a point in time in every man's life where he has to ask himself a couple of questions like, who do I impact? Who am I? What do I leave behind? Did I make the right decision? What's a good guy's a life-changing experience where we allow room for growth to embrace our masculinity, reveal our vulnerability, and take accountability while getting the perspective of others as we continue to ask the question, what's a good guy? Premiering every Monday on all streaming platforms at 8 a.m. Don Peasley knows where I'll be at. You are watching a master at work. Hey, hey. Oh, okay, we live and direct, motherfuckers. Um, hey, what's going on? You know the vibrations on this side. It's your most favorite lover is always Donald Peasley. Alongside of LaShawn. Now tuning in what's a good guy. Shout out to all y'all for subscribing, liking, commenting, doing everything I do every week. We do appreciate y'all. Another day in quarantine. Hopefully y'all doing good. Staying safe. Keeping your hands to your motherfucking selves. I mean that in all aspects of that. Phrase. If you didn't hear last week's episode... Or you wasn't on the timeline for the last two weeks, you know. Yeah, if you don't, if Facts. you don't indulge in, tw- well, this shit is everywhere. So, yeah, just, yeah. just let her take it, guys. Yeah, mm. that's it's, it. It's, it's better that. That's way. how it goes. Weird. With consent. With consent. <laughs> with consent. Yeah, with ladies, consent. get consent too, please. Well, with me, you always have consent, but you know, <laughs> I'm not one of those. This nigga's, <laughs> this nigga's a slur. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what's going on, man? What's going on, man? Not the young brother next to me. Oh, the best graphic designer in New York. You know City. the vibrations. <laughs> the most humblest. Oh, man. We only fuck with Haitian graphic designers on this side, boss. We fuck with them Africans. Oh man. <laughs> we got we got change the logo. <laughs> we got change the logo, hey. Yo, y'all I never I never seen an I never seen an African nigga do nothing to Jordan That's Mike really and El- <laughs> wrong like that in my Yo, life. Or at least show his work. Come on. Oh. <laughs> How do I know he's really doing it? <laughs> <laughs> this they, got, <laughs> they got a ghostwriter. This <laughs> graphic design shit. At least I see proof of work. Wow, you know what I'm saying? saying? There's a difference between, you know, somebody doing the... Uh, he does short division. Uh-huh. <laughs> this man right here does the long, long division. division. That's what I'm talking about work. right there, boy. <laughs> oh, um, you yes, get sir, a 55. Nigga. Yes, sir. It's the kid, um, David Balan, better known as Zav to some. Um, I'm a graphic designer. The best. Um, <laughs> Oh yeah, that Joe, that Joe niggas yeah. in the building. <laughs> Let's just get that out there. <laughs> oh yeah, Joe's in the building. Pish posh, the second Yo, best to see. Come on, brother, you got I'm the spotlight. Just, um, a graphic designer, um, collaborator, art director, a digital artist, um, an educator, mm. and I'm just I'm grateful to be on this show. Um, I'm grateful to be on your podcast. Um, <laughs> For real, like yo, it's I'm 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 serious, man. This is this is all new to me, so I'm just grateful to be here. Uh, that's what's up. Also, what you left out is uh, uh, accepted into Harvard. Congratulations. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Congratulations. Clap for that you. black man for uh, being accepted into Harvard, man. Thank you. I'll be forgetting to, um, I always be forgetting to tell people that because it's like I mean, it's it has in the back of my head right now. It has oh, it. does. <laughs> you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. How does it feel being a kid from Canarsie getting accepted to Harvard? Um, Damn. Uh, well, my brother went, um, he went in 2016 for grad school and I remember like being on campus, um, when he graduated and I was like, damn, this is a nice ass campus. Like I want to go here too. Um, so then I went home and I was like, I was like looking at, um, like programs and shit. And I was just like, damn, I don't think I'm going to be able to apply to this shit. Cause like the requirements and like everything was just really crazy, mm-hmm. but I knew exactly what I wanted to do because I had just started getting into graphic design at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and I knew like, like I knew what I wanted to do and I knew how I wanted to get there. I just didn't know like what, how long that would take. But like the feeling is, um, the feeling is amazing. I think when people remind me, I'm always like, Oh shit, I'm really going to Harvard. Like that's crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, it's a good feeling. It's a good feeling overall. What were the requirements? Um, yeah, I mean, that's a great question. So for anyone who wants to know if you want to apply, um, I just had to get like three recommendation letters. Um, I had to write an essay. I had mm-hmm. to send them my, my specific program. Um, I had to send them my portfolio. So mm-hmm. at the time, I had my portfolio in Dropbox. Mm-hmm. So it was like super unprofessional. Like I just sent like the, the Dropbox like a link. 
And um, <laughs> you said all for the link. <laughs> like it was a link. It was a link. I sent them a link. Like, and I was listen just to like, my song. <laughs> this is what I have right now. Like I don't have a website. I don't have anything. So I'm gonna just give y'all a link. So I gave them the link. Mm-hmm. I wrote an essay. Um, I had my brother also refer me. Mm-hmm. Um, and then um, I had to submit my GRE scores, but I don't think they looked at it. I really don't think they looked at it because my GRE scores. Hey, high. hey, hey! It was it was excellent. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it was the best. The best to the we best. We got you, brother. I know you say you're new to this. So that's yeah. why we're here. He's very humble. That's I'm, very I'm, humble. All right, I'm gonna leave that alone. Yeah. So, so yeah, it was just those things I had to submit, and then um, they got back to me in March, and I remember being home with my brother, and um, he was just like, "All right, yo, open it." So I opened it, and like there was confetti that came out on the um oh, like, on the website. So I was like, "Oh!" As soon as I saw the confetti, I knew. I was like, "Shit." I got in. I was screaming and shit. Like I was mad excited. So um, I'm happy about that. Congratulations, my brother. Nah, that's thank a fact. You, you are the first person I've ever met that that goes to Harvard. So. Oh wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. My brother was the first person I've I met. I ain't meet your brother, yet, bro. <laughs> <laughs> now, where'd you start off? You. Where'd you start off doing um, graphic design? Um, so my story is not like it's not similar to a lot of people. So so not and, like Joe's. Um, because he's basic. <laughs> <laughs> So ordinary ass. <laughs> I didn't see that. Joe ain't got no I, I game. Joe just, Joe just got I popularity, didn't. bro. There's no talent to Joe's. Joe ain't right. got no goddamn game. That nigga's just well popular. So you're smoking basketball, sir? The, the crazy yeah, thing he, is, though, the crazy thing is, though, and I'm going to just plug this, but there are some things that Joe does that I just... Yeah, my man, my man, yeah, yeah my that's man, not what man. we're here for. We're here for what you do. All right, all right, all right. I'm going to just, man, just leave it alone. But... um. I'm just leaving it. Shout out to Lincoln. But um, I think it was in, it was the same year that my brother graduated. Mm -hmm. Um, I, like, I was, I was mad stressed out at work. So I, so just so you know, I work in education. Um, Mm -hmm. I was, I used to be an educator, but now I work in like operations. Mm -hmm. Um, So I was mad, I was mad stressed out at work. Mm -hmm. Um, And like, I needed an outlet. So I was just like, yo, I don't really know, like, I don't have any hobbies. I don't really have anything that I'm like passionate or like really Mm -hmm. good at so um like i was i'm super into like sci-fi afrofuturism and you could see it in some Mm -hmm. of my graphics Mm -hmm. um so what happened was there was this app that i was using on my phone it's called photo fox and Mm -hmm. like and so that's how i got my start like i i would literally like i would take pictures of stuff on my block Mm -hmm. um and then i would just like add like alien ships in it i would add like stars in it Mm -hmm. i would just weird shit just Mm -hmm. just random shit Mm -hmm. um and to me it was fun like i was just having fun like it was Mm de-stressing um and then my girl told me oh you should put it up on instagram and i was like nah Mm -hmm. people are gonna look at this and be like you mad weird Mm -hmm. (laughs) i was just like i was just like nah i'm not i'm not putting anything on instagram and then i started getting better at it um but i was still doing everything on my phone Mm -hmm. i hadn't even touched adobe at Mm -hmm. the time Mm -hmm. um and this was in 2017 and um at some point i remember i did an edit of like this, um, I took a photo of a sunset mm-hmm. and I added, um, I added like jellyfish in it. I don't know if I still have that photo. Um, I'll definitely send it to y'all if I do, mm-hmm. if I do find it. But I remember I made it and I was like, yo, this shit is mad fire. My girl's like, you should put it on Instagram. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna put it on Instagram. So I put it on Instagram and people like, they gravitated towards mm-hmm. it. At the time, I thought it was mad fire. Mm-hmm. Now when I look at it, I'd be like, this is not it. <laughs> like this is like I I could totally do it way better way now. Better. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that's essentially how it got started. And then after that, um, because people liked that photo so much, mm-hmm. I started putting more on Instagram. And then um, I decided to take a chance on myself and invest in Adobe Photoshop because mm-hmm. um, like it's pricey. But I was just like, yo, fuck it. Mm-hmm. I have a job. I can pay for it. So. Um, I started like I started making edits that um I started making edits that way. Mm-hmm. Okay, so how much do you give your girl credit for give, uh pushing? Mm-hmm. I give my girl all the credit, man. I love mm-hmm. Kate. I love you so much. Oh, like, oh. Girl, like, um, I just want to <laughs> throw that out that there. Was beautiful. I just want to throw that out there. Um, that was beautiful, we've been, man. We've been together since 2016. Okay. Um, so we are. This is this is gonna be our fourth year together in December. Um, so yeah, I give her a lot of credit for that because she. She was the first person like pushing me. Like, I'll be getting bullied. Like, people be like, oh, you should make a website. You should do this. You should do that. But she's like started it. Like, she was just like, yo, mm-hmm. put your shit on Instagram. Stop playing. Don't go to Harvard and mess with no, <laughs> no white women, bro. 
Come on, we'll God. crucify you for that, bro. Okay, I'm <laughs> definitely not, not at all. Nah, it's it's never. Never. It sounds, it sounds like you got a good one, bro. I'm That's what's up. That. That's what's up. Now, let me ask you a question. When you did the website, you think you made a post saying you were scared you were going to lose customers due to the fact that you're changing in prices? Why? No. Mm. Oh man, that's a good question. Um, so. That Harvard acceptance letter. He's like, oh, man. <laughs> to price price. Go up. <laughs> go up. Yo, I'm not in the tax brackets with you is, with beyond anymore. The funny thing is, the funny thing is, I've, I've been seeing my prices be going up for a long time, even before the Harvard acceptance. I mm-hmm. think it started with, um, I, did a, I did a logo for an international furniture company based mm-hmm. in California. Mm-hmm. And when they sent me the, um, their budget, I was just like, why am I charging people so little when people mm-hmm. are out that when there are people out there willing to pay you mm-hmm. like throwing money at you? So mm-hmm. I was just like, I'm putting, I'm bringing my prices up. Like y'all playing, y'all playing games. So um, I don't think it had anything to do with um, Harvard, but it was just like I'm bringing my prices up. So I did, and then what happened was um, <clears throat> after I got into Harvard, and um, you know things just start, things just started shifting. Um, I realized that. I needed to start charging what my art is worth. Mm. Um, and so I remember there's one photo on my um, Instagram right now that I did of um, my friend Britt, um, Brizzle B. Mm-hmm. And That's she, yeah, that, was um, that photo, after I did that photo, I was like, yo, I should, be like, I should be charging people for mm-hmm. this. Like, I should be charging people way, way, way more mm-hmm. than what I put out there or what I let on. Mm-hmm. And so, because like, that's art. Mm-hmm. You know, that's art. That's that's something that I'm putting out there for people to, um, mm-hmm. you know, see, to put on their walls or whatever. And then I think Kojo commented and was like, oh, you need to get this, um, you need to get this um, put on your wall. And I was like, damn, I should be charging people. Like, I should really be, mm-hmm. I should be up in the price. So I think it came from that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also the fact that the work is not easy. Like, mm-hmm. people think you can just go into Photoshop or Illustrator and just, like, create Nixon. something. Nixon but it's not tools. that simple. So talk about becoming a master at your craft. Um, definitely. So I think one thing that I left out in my like origin story was that when I first started doing it, mm-hmm. I wasn't taking on clients. Like people were like, oh, I want like, can you do this for me? Can you do that for me? I wasn't taking on any clients when I first started. I just wanted to learn everything that there was in Photoshop. And so my philosophy when it comes to um, graphic design is like learn everything you can. Like if you if you're if you're going to be invested in Photoshop, mm-hmm. learn everything you can about Photoshop. Don't just take like, don't, don't just learn the pen tool and the brush tool and then say, I'm a graphic designer, because that's crazy to me. Like, mm-hmm. I know a lot of people that do that. They're just like, they know one or two things, and they're just like, oh, um, I know graphic design. It's like, yeah, but, like, you can do more. You mm-hmm. know, like, there aren't, there's so many tools in Photoshop mm-hmm. for, for people to use, for people to, like, be able to create, like, amazing artwork, but they're, like, limiting themselves. And f- so for me, what happened was I got on Photoshop, and I was mad intimidated when I first started, because, remember, I was... I was doing stuff on my phone. It was mm-hmm. easy. Different when you get to a fucking laptop. It was laptop. very different. Mm-hmm. Very different. So I got on the laptop and I'm just like, yo, you know what? I'm going to just learn everything. It took me about six months to learn everything I could learn in Photoshop. Um, and, and to start making the art that I wanted to make. Mm-hmm. And then even after that, um, I would still, like to, to this day, I'm still trying to learn different tools. Like I, w- I would get on Photoshop mm-hmm. every now and then. Um, and then just be like, you know what? I'm gonna play with a tool that I've never played with before, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna just see how it works. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna just play around with it, um, and then I'm gonna add it to something like the last edit that I did um, of the fluid portrait, um, like the metallic paint. Mm-hmm. That was something that I had never done before. Mm-hmm. So people are looking at me and thinking like, oh, you know, like this is amazing. You probably have been doing this for a while. Like, nah, I just that was the first time I did it. Mm-hmm. I just like that was the first. So um, I think <coughs> that's what I want people to get take away from that. Mm-hmm. It's just um, for me to become a master at my craft, mm-hmm. I had to like sit and learn everything that I could before I started saying, all right, yeah, I can take on clients and stuff like that. So sit down and <coughs> legit watch YouTube tutorials for fucking six months, bro, takes fucking patience. I give, the, it, I give it to graphic designers, bro. Y'all patient as fuck, because Photoshop is annoying as shit. Bro, that's the thing. So um, one of the things that like I pride myself on, but I don't really like put it out there. Mm. One of the things that I pride myself on is that I didn't really watch a lot of YouTube videos when I first started. Oh, shit. I was oh, legit shit. just in Photoshop, just like, I'm going to just play with this shit. Because I'm not a, um, like, I can't, like, I can't learn from, like, 
watching videos. Mm -hmm. So for me, like, I have to actually do it myself. Okay, so um, how do you teach since you're an educator? So that's a great question. So for me, um, when I was, when I was um, teaching, what I would do, I would incorporate a lot of, like, hands-on opportunities for students to learn mm -hmm. um, whatever it is that um, we were doing. So mm -hmm. I remember um, even before I got into graphic design, I was um, teaching, like, a lot of, like, leadership courses for students. Mm -hmm. And um, I would give them opportunities for them to, like, write um write letters to like the mayor i would give them mm. actual opportunities to like do the things that we always teach about mm. you know so because that helped me and i knew that i had a lot of kids that were doing the same thing mm. and even now um with doing graphic design mm -hmm. i do that with a lot of um i like i i still teach i still teach and i teach graphic design to some kids and i'm like yo <clears throat> we're gonna do it in a way that you're you're doing the work yourself but i'm also mm. like guiding you so that mm. when i leave you are you have all the tools. You know exactly what to do, and that's that's um that's my biggest thing when it comes to um like teaching graphic design. Is mm -hmm. I want you to have all the tools so that I don't like you don't have to come to me. One thing that I admire about uh your post is like the the actual like time lapse of you designing it. I, oh, I think that is like the most enjoyable part than the final so product. Yeah, final what products, what like, makes fine. you actually put Thank that you. out there and show your work? Um, damn. Y'all yeah, asked all the questions today. <laughs> um, um, I think, I so it's actually a funny story. So when the first time I ever put it out, someone someone had said something about I wasn't making those photos, mm -hmm. and I was like, Oh, okay. So oh, they try to pull your car. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> you gotta do it to somebody. I was, like, <laughs> I was like, Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Cool. Say no more. Mm -hmm. So what? I don't even remember what photo it was that I made a speed video of. Mm -hmm. It's definitely not on my Instagram anymore. But I was just like, yo, niggas, it's crazy. Like, you really going to sit here and say this is not my artwork? I've been putting out all this work, and you, like, mm -hmm. you telling me it's not my artwork? That's wild. So um, I was like, I'm going to show y'all niggas that this is my artwork. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I, I follow, like, a lot of... Um, I follow, like, a lot of Instagram pages mm -hmm. that do, like, graphic design, mm -hmm. um, like, different art stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and, like, I see that they do speed videos. So I was like, mm -hmm. I'm going to make my own. Mm -hmm. So I started making the speed videos. Um, and then people just started loving it. Like, I remember, like, I remember um, you hit me up and you told me, like, yo, this is mad dope. Like, you should do more of it. And I was like, I should be. But that shit is mad hard to do. Like, it's no, not, I love it. it's not a fun process, but... I love I love to be able to put it out there so that people can see like oh this is this is how you, you did made it. your own fucking movie type I think I think <laughs> what what was was dope about that is like in, in life sometimes we only see the finished product mm -hmm. right so it's to see somebody start off with one picture and it come out and with then it, totally different I mean even though it's like within the time seconds mm -hmm. of fifteen seconds or whatever you just actually see the hard work that mm -hmm. it took and you appreciate the final product more than now that you see what he started with so right. I always thought that was dope. Thank you. And another thing is like, yo, I think these movie directors need to start they hitting you, you up. That was bro. too fire. Because <laughs> some, some of them, some of y'all tell them, <laughs> <laughs> yo, because I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying out here. Like I'm trying to, I'm trying to tap into everything, which is why I put my um, portfolio website out the way that I did. Yeah, congratulations, man, you. on the website. Congratulations. I definitely looked at yeah. this shit too. That was fire. Yo, I appreciate, I appreciate y'all for looking at it, for sharing it, mm -hmm. like. It means it means the world to me when people I know are like sharing it so that other people can see. Mm -hmm. Because I woke up the next morning because I dropped it because Kojo was bullying me. As I usual, like, I, got, I got a question. I got a question for after you done. <laughs> but um, I dropped it like that. I dropped it like at night, and then I woke up the next morning and I had like three thousand um, page views, and I was like, I don't even know three thousand. <laughs> 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 I even, like, like, that's wild to me. Like three thousand, where did three thousand people you're putting come from? That, you're putting in that work, bro. You gotta mm -hmm. expect people to gravitate towards it. If you're putting out fire content, that's what's gonna happen. I appreciate that. I now, appreciate that. Now, with your confidence and you following all these graphic designers, does it bother you when Kojo says he's the best graphic designer? Not at all, because I think we can. I think I think that um, we can all eat. Mm -hmm. I feel like everybody can. Um, everybody can benefit. Mm -hmm. Like to be honest with y'all. Like, me and Koji, we talk all the time, and, like, we'll bounce ideas off of each other. Mm -hmm. So it's sure. like, everybody can eat. Everybody can be at the top. Everybody can um, benefit from, especially, well, I'll, I'll talk about, like, my line of work yeah, specifically, sure? but, mm -hmm. like, everybody in graphic design can benefit, you know, because I might be really good at something, and somebody else might be really good at something else. Absolutely. I try to be, I try to be as good as I can be at everything, because, like, I just want to, I just want to be able to have all that knowledge, you know, I want to be able to, like... Mm -hmm. Be, I want to be able to say that, like, I'm multidisciplinary. You know, I make cover art. I make movie posters. I make 
regular art. I make logos. I do all of this stuff. Mm-hmm. But everybody can eat. So it doesn't bother me at all. And the other thing is... Talk your shit. I the feel it. Thing is, Talk your shit, playboy. <laughs> Talk your shit, playboy. I feel it. Go ahead. The other thing is, the reason I feel like it doesn't bother me is because I know my art. Mm. And I know I know the value of my art. And I know I also know that there are a lot of people on social media who says they're like they're great graphic designers, they're the best graphic designer. And I'll be like, I don't know. Mm. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to revisit this one. But <laughs> so so now that we're doing like the beat battles and song battles, like I can, I'm can, can we get, can we get you and Joe love to do a battle with somebody. Can we get you and Joe Olav for a graphic battle? <laughs> I don't. I don't know. How that's gonna work though. I don't know. How that's gonna work. That'd be fire. I really don't know how that would work. But nah, don't, 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 don't down, don't downplay y'all, y'all audience. No, that's a, that's, a, that's another thing. I, um, speaking of downplay, you and I have had conversations, and I'm like, yo, bro, why you downplay yourself so much? Like, man, when do you, when do you like? I know there's a difference between being yeah, humble, humble and 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 arrogant, yeah. like Joe. Yeah, yeah. No, um, no, no. <laughs> that's why I'd rather do business with you instead of Joe. <laughs> But uh, but Yo. no, there's uh, um, there's times where like we'll talk in yeah. private, and I'd be like, "Yo, bro, like, why you let them know? Like, why are you so nice. down on yourself about the work you do?" Man, I, that's a that's a question that <laughs> I don't know if I have the answer for it. Mm-hmm. I think it I think it comes from like, I think it comes from my my need sometimes to not be in the spotlight. Like mm-hmm. I, I'm like I like shy away from the spotlight a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so, I know you canceled a couple times. <laughs> You're not gonna talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here now. That's mm-hmm. what that's what matters. That's right. <laughs> but um, I think I think it comes from like me like shying away from things, which is mm-hmm. why like which is why like a lot of the people that I'm meeting now, a lot of the people that I'm working with now, they've just met me for the first time. Mm-hmm. You know, like a lot of people are like, oh, why, why, did, why, have I, why haven't I heard of you before? Mm-hmm. I'm just like, I can't really give them an answer, but I know the reason why. It's like I shy away from things. And I think it comes from that, but I'm trying to get out of that box because um, I know that... Your like, work is going to put you in the front, like, regardless, right. It's going to put me in the yeah. front. It's going to put me in the front regardless. So I'm just like, yo, let me just step out of this box, which mm-hmm. is why I did the website, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Because it was like, I got to a point where I was like, yo, people are looking at the art. People want to see more art. Mm-hmm. People want to see art in one space. So mm-hmm. I was just like, I'm going to just put it out. But are you confident? Though, are you confident in the art outside of the confidence in yourself? Absolutely. Like, I'm definitely confident in art. Like, I don't think... No one can tell me that my art is bad. Mm-hmm. No one can tell me that my logos are bad. No one can tell me that, um, like, the shit is not clean. Like, my art mm-hmm. is the shit. Like, no, what, what if y'all want me to talk my shit, like... No, 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 no. As you should. It's really the shit. And so... So how, co- so how come you have so much confidence in your art, but not in yourself? Ah, man. <laughs> 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 where where's, where does the the boost come from when it's your art than the like I think when you shut off I'm, the computer? Oh man, I think it's because I think it's because I know the art can speak for itself. Mm, and okay. like when I'm describing the art myself, I think sometimes I can get um a little bit in my head. Mm-hmm. And so I become like I, I could be talking about the art, right? Like, let's say I'm talking about the Michael Jordan edit that mm, I did. I love that shit. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I could be talking about that. And like I'm talking about it and I start to like doubt that I'm confident about why I did the art or like mm. what was the purpose of putting mm. it out or what I wanted people to feel when they saw that art, mm-hmm. you know? But I can, but that's me in my head. And mm. I think that's where it comes from. But I need to get out of that and just say simply like, I wanted to make the art because I wanted people to get excited about The Last Dance. Like, it's something really simple, you know, mm-hmm. but I get in my head so many times. And so I've been trying to get out of that. Kojo got this joke with, uh, with one of our friends, and he calls him explainy. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's the same Yo. thing. Like, like <laughs> you don't have to explain it, bro. Just say what you mean, right. mean what you right. say, right. And, then, and, and, think- then, and then tell Kojo to fuck off. <laughs> now, when you say, when you say, um, <laughs> my fault. When you say nobody could tell you about your art, what if a client tells you, I don't like this logo? I don't like mm. how you did it. Yeah. That's fine. Um, yeah, because so you? cause you're in customer service now. Yeah, so yeah, the so customer is like, always right. We're Honestly, paying you out. Yo. Since you raised their price, we got yeah, yeah, to put an extra, yeah. Yeah. extra hour of right, right. o- o- OT. You know? So I always, I always um, let the client know what they're getting. Um, I always tell them like what type of art I specialize in because mm. I don't want them to think like, 
they about to get something and mm-hmm. I'm actually about to do this. So I let them know. I, I let them understand my logic. Mm-hmm. And so when they when when I le- when I let them know the prices of like logos, mm-hmm. um, I tell them that I tell them exactly why it costs this much money. Mm-hmm. You know, because one, it's not easy to do. Mm-hmm. Two, it takes a lot of creative direction. Like I don't know. Other graphic designers can definitely attest to this. Mm. Doing logos is tremendously harder than doing cover art or just doing regular art. Mm. Because it's like, it, this is someone's brand. You know, mm. like, what's a good guy? Like, that's your brand. You mm. want people, when they see what's a good guy, they already know who it's associated with. Mm. You know what I mean? So you want to make something iconic, something memorable, something like, and I use this example all the time. Mm. You want to make something like, you see how Apple and Nike has the, have their logos, mm. and it's like as soon as you see that Apple, you know exactly who it is. You know what? You don't have to see the title, the mm. name, or nothing. Mm. When you see the Nike check, you know it's Nike. Mm. Mm. And so I let them know like I'm gonna be doing something like this for you, and this is why it costs this amount of money. Mm. And so when they when I send it to them and they ask for revisions, I have no problem doing that because one, I'm gonna charge you for it, but two, mm. um. It's your logo. Mm-hmm. It's not mine. I'm not gonna do anything with it. At at the very most, mm-hmm. I'm just gonna put it up. So if you if it's your logo and um, you want a revision with it, I have no problem like making those revisions. But I do want them to understand that like what I made you the first time, mm-hmm. it was definitely it. But if you want those revisions, that's totally fine See, as well. You got that confidence? Nah, I don't. You gotta have that same confidence in you, bro. If if you giving somebody something, like yo, nah, take it. This is what you need. <laughs> yo, well, but I, I, but I, I, I play devil's advocate because um, when Joe remade the logo, there was countless times that I I knew, and and I think this is one of the hardest part. Of like working with friends because mm-hmm. if I didn't know Joe, I would have no problem. Like yo, bro, fix that. I don't like that. that. I don't. Oh, right. I don't like that. I don't. But wanna, I, I, don't I didn't want to question mm-hmm. my friends' work, but mm-hmm. I knew what I saw. Mm-hmm. I knew Joe had the talent to bring it to life, right. but so there bullshit. there were certain pieces that was just not there, mm-hmm. and I and I stayed on them until I got it done, which and he did, you mm-hmm. know. And he was well compensated. <laughs> but um, I think when you do things for friends, like do you take it personal that they doubt? What you what you did the first time? I do a little bit because I'd be mm. like, damn, like mm. you know me. Like, the, <laughs> yeah, but that like, doesn't mean problem? just because you know, just because <laughs> I know you doesn't, doesn't mean because there may be but, one day I, yeah. I hit you up for some work, and if I could do that with Joe, then I have no problem doing that with Absolutely. you. But in the same time, it's not it's not that we doubt you as a customer. It's just that when we saw it, there's something that we saw and we just. We don't know how to, to verbally life. say it, it but life. I just exactly. need you to bring it to exactly. life. You know what I'm saying? It's like you're you're the doctor. Mm-hmm. You're not there when I'm having sex with my girl, <laughs> right? But right. you're bringing my child into mm-hmm. life. So I right. need you to take the same tender care of bringing my kid to life as I did when I conceived exactly. it. Exactly, right. exactly. And so, I mean, just to piggyback off of what you're saying, mm-hmm. like with, with my friends especially, like, yes, you, yes, you're my friend, but you're also a client. And like, if you want a change, it's because you saw something that's not on the paper, that's not on paper. Right, now. right. So it's like, I'm not going to take that experience away from you. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to say, all right, let me know what it is that you are looking for. Mm-hmm. And then we can make those revisions. And, and then one thing, most times, most times, um, in my experience so far, and I'm so glad that this is been my only experience and I hope that it will continue to be my experience but people either love it on the first go mm. or they ask for like a minor revision yeah, yeah, yeah you know like they might ask like oh I don't really like how it looks 3D can you just make it flat mm. like it'll be something really small and mm. that's that's something I can work with like that doesn't that doesn't hurt my ego at all cause it's like alright you just don't want a 3D logo but mm. you like the logo mm. so how is your ego um I think as a man <laughs> 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 like all right um um i think I, okay are you asking me like as a man in general as, as a, a man graphic in general designer? not as a designer because the confidence right. as a designer is there like we okay. see that okay but as a man like um i'm pretty confident in myself um mm. i believe that um like i don't i'm pretty confident in myself to understand that like I am I am who I am mm. and nobody can take that from me. No mm. one can change that about me. Mm. Um I'm pretty confident in the space that I keep. I'm pretty confident in the thoughts that I have. Mm-hmm. Um and I understand that there are things happening. There are things that that are happening especially um in today's society with like Absolutely. we see everything that's been happening this mm. week. Mm. And so like 
a lot of male egos were hurt. A lot of like, um, um, men were just like, they were showing their asses. Yeah. And so for me, it's like, yo, y'all got to take a look in the mirror. Mm-hmm. Like we all have to take looks in the mirror, you know, mm-hmm. and just like realize that like, there, there's a lot of things that are going on. There are a lot of things that are happening that we need to come to grips with. Mm-hmm. And so for me, um, I'm very like cognizant of that and I'm very like self-aware of like where I am in life and mm-hmm. the type of man that I am. Mm-hmm. And I'm fine with that, you know? Mm-hmm. Now, with your way of thinking and your confidence in your way of thinking, if your lady tells you something like, I don't like the way you're thinking, that's not a good way to think. Do you, do you, like, yo, do you tell her, like, yo, you don't know what you're talking about? Nah, I listen to my girl, man. <laughs> you're on a great girl. path to life. I listen to my girl. <laughs> happy wife is a happy I life, to my girl. <laughs> um, I definitely listen to my girl. I, like, I'll give, you, I'll give you an example. It didn't happen with my girl, but it definitely happened, um, like, way before that. I remember, um, um, like, one of my, like, sister friends, mm-hmm. she was, like, she was talking about, um, like, male misogyny and, like, just um, how men react to, like, gay men or, like, men of, like, the LGBTQ community mm-hmm. being in, like, spaces where, like, men are. Mm-hmm. And she was like, a lot of y'all need to look in the mirror and realize that y'all don't like when gay men are in y'all spaces. And then I was like, that hit me hard because I was just like, damn, that's definitely me. And so, like, I had to unpack a lot of, like, mm-hmm. the shit that I was brought up on. Mm-hmm. Like, I grew up in a Haitian household. Mm-hmm. Caribbean households in general, um, right. mm-hmm. African households in general, like, mm-hmm. is very, very, very homophobic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, for me, it's like, I had to unpack a lot of that and realize, why am I afraid or, like, why am I fearful or why do I have a problem with gay mm-hmm. men being in these spaces? Mm-hmm. It doesn't change who I am, mm-hmm. you know? Absolutely. So, it's mm-hmm. like, for me, it was like, I had to unpack a lot of that stuff. And mm-hmm. so... Um, that's just an example of it, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. like with my girl, it's like if she tells me like, "Yo, you bugging," mm. I probably am, and I have to like we talk about it. But it's like we have to figure out like what's going on. Why are you thinking this way? Where does mm. it come from, and mm. how can we change it so that it's a positive um, outlook on life? You got one of those relationships where I'm I'm gonna be sad if y'all don't work, bro. Because <laughs> you see how <laughs> how well he speaks about how he posts her all the time. <laughs> It's like, damn, like you could tell, like, <laughs> and she was there for the beginning. Facts, you could, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. She, was like that. she saw my, she saw my bad art. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. She still she called was, it great. She, she did, facts, she did. So but I know great, she bro. probably did not think it was great at the time. And that's maybe, fine. She did, <laughs> maybe she bro. did, bro. Maybe she, did. maybe she believed in you or the potential of what you could be and pushed you through it. That's true. And that, and that, that's what it, that's what it takes sometimes. That partner that keeps you going. So that's what's up, man. Don't lose that. Thank you. Trust me. Absolutely. It will hurt. <laughs> it will hurt. And you'll Yo. be right back here talking about how you <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> and I'll be right here yeah. to record it because it's good <laughs> content. I'm not weak. <laughs> it's, like, it's so fucked up, bro. <laughs> now, I want to talk about some um a tweet that somebody posted the other day. He mm-hmm. said, um, give me one second, I'm sorry. He said, you are, he was talking about photography. Okay. He said, you aren't a photographer, a photographer if your shit is mid. <laughs> I saw that tweet, <laughs> and that sh- that shit didn't sit right with me, bro. <laughs> Not as a photographer, but as a creative. Period. Where, where that came from? I saw one, that tweet. I, I don't know. know one one is, I don't know. Oh, oh, oh! It's nobody in that. Nah, nah. I don't know. I don't I know. I mean, do but, I show? Yeah, but he liked it. He liked it. Okay. Yeah. Now nah, the I person saw, who said it did not show. Nah. Oh, okay, okay. Then I sat okay. there and looked at it. I'm like, yo, that's kind of weird because, yo, I would say I'm a photographer because I love this shit. Mm-hmm. Right. I would say I'm a podcaster because I love this shit. I've, I'm doing this shit. Right. Even when you said um, something about graphic designing as well, if you, um, you're not a graphic designer if you're only using like two tools, the fucking patch tool, the lasso tool. Bro, if I put my all into this shit and I love this shit, mm. that's what I am. Mm. That's you true. Can't, you can't tell me shit else, bro. I mean, but is it art now, subjective though? Now, I want to I wanna clarify that, <laughs> right? So this is the thing. When I said that, what I meant was... Oh, you said it? No, 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 no. no, no <laughs> oh, not that tweet. Not that tweet. When I was, oh, said earlier, oh, oh, but I waited. Oh, okay, I waited. Okay, okay. What I was saying about um, graphic, like if, you, if you're mm-hmm. only using like one or two tools, you're not really a graphic designer. You said you I want to clarify that. Mm-hmm. Um, and what I want to say about that is that I, what we see a lot of the time with graphic design, what well, people who say they're graphic designers is they might put out something that they didn't put their all into. Mm-hmm. Like I know you could have put your all into it. Mm-hmm. And they always, they consistently put out stuff that I'm just like, I know you could be doing a little bit more. Mm. So it's like, or they, or they see it as just a hobby, or they mm. see it as just something where it's like, yeah, 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 oh yeah, yeah, I do graphic design. But it's yeah. like, do you really do graphic design? Mm. Yeah. And I think that, I think in a sense, that's agreeing mm. with what you're saying, because mm. it's like, 
if you're putting your passion into it, yeah, yeah. if you're putting your all into it, yeah, 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 that's yeah. what you do. Like yeah. when we walked in, you started setting up, and I was like, damn, this nigga getting no work. <laughs> I was like, he's not playing right now. Like he's massive. You wasn't joking. You wasn't playing around with anybody. Like you just got to work, and I was like, yeah, he's a podcaster. Like. That's what you like. This is something that mm. I wouldn't say that. Oh yeah, I do that if I'm just at home and I get on every thirty minutes, mm-hmm. every thirty thirty minutes, um, every week and do like mm. some little shit. Like mm-hmm. this is mm. podcasting. You mm. know what I mean? Mm. So, I think if you put your all into it, mm-hmm. you definitely are that. But if you are, I wouldn't use the word mid. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> if you are just putting out content where it's like. You're not really it's, proud of it. You're, you're just not, putting it out. Just you're just put putting it out. it out because mm-hmm. you want people to know that you do this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's not really what you I want to play devil's advocate to this, Go though, right? Because <laughs> in, in the <laughs> sense of like, well, you took six months before you dropped your, your first product for right. people to judge, right? right? But then there's people who, who are dropping it on the way of learning. So like, yeah, you, you, so you see this now, right? But like episode one, two, and three... You know, people would if people would say, "Oh, you're not podcasters because it's not the highest value that it is now." What happens to the growing stage? Do we then ignore the growing stage? Do we then discredit people who are on the rise? Now, I'm just playing devil's advocate. No, 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 you're right, you're right. But what about the people who are on the rise? That's like p- doing it publicly, opposed to the the private person. You know what I'm saying? No, absolutely, absolutely. Because I, think- I would say mm-hmm. when you dropped your first one, right? Mm-hmm. You still had like eight, a six, eight to ten that you didn't release. Would you have still said you wasn't uh, a graphic designer then? Yo, the crazy thing about that is, even when I did, mm-hmm. I didn't call myself a graphic designer. Mm-hmm. Um, so when so did you start I think saying that you were one? The truth, mm-hmm. <laughs> I think I started calling myself a graphic designer in late 2018. So like no, sorry, late 2019. So, so two year. years. Because you started around 17, right? Yeah. But I didn't, like, I didn't see myself, I didn't see myself at the level that I am now. Mm-hmm. And I think that, that might just be a personal thing. Yeah. That might just be a personal Maybe. thing. Maybe. I think for me, it was like, I think just now I was talking like the abstract, mm-hmm. but for me, it was, it was definitely personal because I wasn't at a level where mm-hmm. I was confident enough to say, yeah, this is not where, this is not my best, this mm-hmm. is not the best work that I'm ever going to create, but this is where I feel comfortable enough to say that I am a graphic designer. Mm-hmm. And so um, that came like really late. Mm-hmm. But to go, to, to, to come back to, what, to the point that you were making, mm-hmm. I definitely think there is um, that time period where like, you know, people are working on their craft, even if it is those two tools that they're using mm-hmm. in graphic design, or even mm-hmm. if it's just like, you know, pointing and shooting mm-hmm. as a photographer and not really knowing what it is that you're doing. If you're, if you're giving my, the key thing for me is that if you're giving it your all, if you're giving it everything you have and you are like really, really like invested in it, you can call yourself a graphic designer, regardless of what stage you're at. Mm-hmm. If you're giving it your all, you can definitely call yourself a graphic designer. You gotta, designer. you gotta be willing to grow and soak up yeah. all the knowledge, yeah. bro. And so that's mm-hmm. the and thing. It's like some people are really just like, they and, plateau. And we got to stop letting people speak neg- negativity negativity on our fucking, on our on our creative process. Yeah. Or anything that we're putting out because people will be like, oh, they'll downplay what you're doing. Oh, fuck out. That shit's not nice. It's like, yo, bro, I just started like last week, started. bro. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I'm started. saying. It's like, like it, yo, bro, people don't, it's like, it, it's kind of sucks. Like, it's people that's been doing this for years. It's like, all right, bro, you've been doing this for four years. From, yeah. Like, yo, bro, I seen your shit for three years ago, bro. It wasn't that good either. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So, Everybody has to stop. But if you are... Mm-hmm. If you're trying and you are putting everything you got into it, you good. Like, you good in my book. You're a photographer mm-hmm. to me. But if you're just doing it because it's the thing to do mm-hmm. or it's like a hobby for you or it's just like, oh, yeah, you know, I do that. Mm-hmm. I do others. Like, I do this, but, you know, I just I just do photography. Like, you're okay. not a photographer. Okay, you know I see I, mean? I see what you're saying. Like, if, if it's something that you half assing or it's just a pastime, yeah, it's, like, that's you, not, you shouldn't deem the, the, the credit of saying you are one. If exactly. You don't do it full and time. for the people who are tweeting, mm-hmm. like, you know, um, saying that, you know, people are, like, if, if you're putting out mid stuff, you're not a photographer, it's like, you don't know what they're doing. It's, mm-hmm. it's literally what you just said. Like, mm-hmm. you don't know what they're doing behind the scenes. You don't know how, how much shit they did to get that photo off. <laughs> yeah. You don't know what they did to get that photo mm-hmm. off. So it's like, let them rock. Yeah. Obviously, they're going to get to a certain point. I remember, I have a, um, I have a friend, Mark Clennon. He, um, I remember, yo, he started, I think, I think he started doing photography 
I don't remember the exact year. I'm going to say 2016. Do not kill me if it's not 2016. But it was 2016, right? Now, um, like, when he was first doing photography, he had just quit his job, and he was just doing, like, um, like he was just taking photos of, like, mm-hmm. buildings and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Now he's working with Nike, Adidas, mm-hmm. um, just, like, different just like different shit. Mm-hmm. And it's, like, when he first put out his work, you would have probably thought it was mid tool. Mm-hmm. But now he's, like, his craft is like, grown and has become something that he's, like, super proud of, mm-hmm. and that's because he worked at it. Mm-hmm. And so you have to give people that opportunity. To work at it. To work at it. Facts. You can't just tell people that the work is, that they're not a photographer because the work, is, because whatever they're putting out is mid, mm. you know? So but I, if you're so. also, on the flip point of that, like I said, if you're not, if you're half-assing it and you're not giving it your all, yeah, you should Please don't associate yourself, yourself yeah. with one of us. Yeah. Go ahead, Don. I know you got a question. Oh, fuck. I forgot because you was about to go. All right, back. <laughs> okay. So tell me or talk to me about your discipline. Mm. Because you was telling me the other day that may be like one of the things that you like oh, in, man. Your, in your Damn, discipline. I said, never said that. <laughs> I said, so, kept that to myself. But nah, like, <laughs> uh, it, it's, it's amazing that like, because recently me and Don was talking about like how procrastination has got the best of us mm-hmm. during this quarantine. And then yeah. you and I was talking about after you dropped your, the Brizzle photo. Yeah. And I, he was like, yo, the hardest thing that I deal with is my discipline. And I'm like, and I, before <laughs> I responded like, bro, you to drop, you, you drop shit a lot. I, I go to his page <laughs> and I'm looking at it and I'm like, <laughs> the fuck are you talking what are you about? Talking about? <laughs> so I jump nah. right back to the message and I'm like, discipline. <laughs> nah, yo. So what, what, what exactly is the discipline that, that you feel like you can tune up a bit? Um, That is a great question. I think... So Kojo can definitely attest to this, and some of my clients can as well. Mm-hmm. It takes me, like, it takes me time to um, put out, like, work for clients. Mm-hmm. And I think that's because um, I'm not disciplined. Like, I'm not, I don't have the, the workflow. Um, like, I have a workflow that works for me, mm-hmm. but I don't have a workflow that, I, I don't have the workflow that I probably should have mm, as okay. a professional creative. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, I should be, like, doing things on a timeline. For me, it's like, I'll get a client and I'll be like, all right, yeah, I'm going to do it. So, like, we have a whole phone conversation and everything. We get off the phone and I'm like, all right, I'm going to try to get this shit done by Friday. And then Thursday will come and I'll be like, damn. I ain't start yet. I ain't start yet. <clears throat> all I got is the idea. Mm-hmm. And so, like, that's the issue of my discipline. Like, I procrastinate a lot. Mm-hmm. And to, give you an, to give you another example, I was supposed to put on my website two years ago. Oh, shit. Damn. <laughs> Talk about it. Damn. God damn. And it just dropped on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so... Be- and and the only reason, the only reason, I'm going to keep saying this, the only reason I think I dropped this website is because we're in quarantine. You know like what if I, I re- didn't have, Like, if I didn't have all that free time, mm-hmm. like, I'm working from home, but if I didn't have all this free time to work on that site, you wonder y'all, you would not, y'all, would not have, y'all would not have a site. I read the other day <laughs> that procrastination is just anxiety from actually tackling the task. Yes, absolutely. And when I read it like that, it was like, Okay, that makes a little bit sense because, like, the last couple of episodes I've been dealing with, I've been having, like, real technical issues. Right. So I feel like I'll just be delaying it because I know bullshit's about to come. <laughs> so it's like, damn, do I want to deal with this bullshit right now? I didn't even Yo. start yet, open, <laughs> put the disc in you the computer. I just know something stupid is about to day, happen, bro. right? <laughs> and... Reading it, it was like, yo, the, the, the anxiety of actually completing this task may hold us back from doing it or the anxiety of what are people going to say or the critique of something that we didn't even start with delays oh, our process. Yes. Can I add something to that? Yeah, go ahead. I also feel like, um, and this might not apply to y'all, but it definitely applies to me. Um, I don't know if y'all f- are familiar with like the fear of success mm-hmm. and how, like, how crippling that can be because for me... Um, when I think about the fair success and why it like cripples my um, growth, mm-hmm. it's because if I if I don't try at something, right? Mm-hmm. If I just don't try at something, I know that I don't have to do anything if it succeeds. Like if you succeed, but if you succeed at something, you know that there's more to come. Mm-hmm. So to give you an example, the website came out, right? Mm-hmm. And I was like, damn. The website, the website came out. People are hitting me up. Now I have to do the work. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Now, now, Because yeah. people actually like it. Mm-hmm. But if I didn't put out the website, I don't have to worry about this. This mm. isn't my problem. Mm. I don't have to worry about people hitting me up mm. and asking for logos or cover art or just regular art. Do you, but do if you, I, mm-hmm. yeah. No, nah, I was going to ask you, do you limit how many people you take? Um, right now, so I'm actually trying to, um, 
take on a model of like other graphic designers that I mm -hmm. see of like taking like taking on a certain amount of clients per month. But I also realize that that doesn't work for me as well. Mm -hmm. So um, right now I'm only working with um, two clients mm -hmm. um, because they want like a brand packaging thing. So mm -hmm. I'm just like working with them specifically. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I think that's how I want to continue working with clients, mm -hmm. um, giving them that, that, that the brand package, the brand packaging or making sure that they have um, something that they love. Mm -hmm. Because and the, my philosophy behind that is that um, I could I could take on five clients a month, right? Mm -hmm. I could take on five clients a month and try to knock five logos out in that month, right? But I might I might miss the mark with one of them, mm -hmm. and I don't want to miss the mark with any of the clients that I have. I don't want to give I don't want to half ass something mm -hmm. or give something that just isn't um, something that I can look back on and say I gave that my all. Now and we so, yeah. My fault we'll cut you off. Um, mm -hmm. We talked about you learning Adobe. Mm -hmm. You learned all this other stuff with the content. When did you learn the business aspect? <laughs> Last week. I love it. I love it. Transparent. Bro. <laughs> I'm still learning. Mm. I'm still learning. If I'm being honest with you, um, so one of my one of my one of my family friends, she's a um, corporate lawyer, mm -hmm. and she was telling me like, I remember, I remember when I was about to first roll out the website. Mm -hmm. I was on Twitter and I was like, Yo, I'm about to drop this website today. It was Saturday, mm -hmm. and she she went. I sent her the site, and she was like, You cannot put this site up. And I was like, Why? And she was like, You have mad copyright issues because a lot of the art that I make, mm -hmm. like for example, the um the inner circle mm -hmm. section, um there's brands in some of those um photos, you mm -hmm. know, like the Nike brand mm -hmm. is in some of them. Mm -hmm. um, you can use players. Like, there's a lot of legalities to it, but, like, you can always make art and sell mm -hmm. of players because they don't technically own those rights. Mm -hmm. But um, she was just like, you have mad copyright issues and you need to watermark everything. Mm. She was like, do you want people to steal? I was like, no. <laughs> she was like, you have to watermark everything. So, um, like, and this was something I didn't know at all before. So, mm -hmm. And that was just one aspect of it. Someone was telling me, like, oh, you need to, like, you need to figure out how you're going to sell art and stuff like that. And, like, all of that, all of this stuff is really new to me. I'm going to be totally transparent. Like, mm. the business aspect of it, I'm still learning. You sending out invoices? I am. Yo, so I am sending out invoices. <laughs> you a petty nigga. You a petty nigga, boy. I am. <laughs> I am. <laughs> I am sending out invoices um, mm. to people. I actually just, yo, to, to show you how unprepared I was for the business aspect, I did not have a pricing chart. Like I, just, you too. like I just <laughs> created a pricing chart mm. um, because someone was like, you can't just tell people like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do it for 150. Or I'm going to do it for 200. Like you have to have a solid mm -hmm. like pricing, pricing yeah. 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 you know, much, for this. My fault to cut you off, bro. Mm -hmm. How much do you charge for, to, um, if they want something fixed? If they want something fixed, I, mean, I do I charge peep, for... I peeped that you said something with revisions. I might yeah, 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 that's what I'm saying. I might stick with Joe. Joe, Joe, do that. I do. Nah, nah, nah. I only went to Joe one time. I ain't want to bother him too much, bro. Yo, I actually got that from, I actually got that from Joe. So Oh, that's why. He wanted yeah. you. He wanted you. Yeah, he trying to fuck, fuck, fuck with the game, boy. I actually got that from him, but... Like, but oh, you um, charged me for a revision? Yo, Joe, look at this shit real quick. Nick said, nigga, hit me back up, bro. Um, I it it really depends on the art. Mm. It depends on the art. Revisions mm. depend on the art. I, I couldn't give you a number, mm. um, like right now on camera, but mm. it really depends on like what it is that you want, um, and the complexity mm. of what it is that you're asking for. If somebody asks for a logo, and um, for example, like Sinead's logo was like one of a kind. It was something I never did before. Um, and if somebody Sinead else Curry, asked me, huh? Sinead Sh Curry. Oh, shout yeah. out to Sinead. Sinead. Yes, yeah. the homie. I love her. Mm -hmm. Um, she, so that her logo, um, for shenanigans was like one of a kind. Mm -hmm. And so I had never done anything like that before. Now, if somebody else asked me to do it, and it took me mad long to do that shit. If somebody else asked me for a logo like that, or like along that, um, along that like style mm -hmm. and they asked for a revision, I might charge way more than I would charge for a minimal, like a logo that's minimal, mm -hmm. you know, because only because like those logos for me are a lot more complex than doing the minimal um, logos. Got you. So yeah. we talked about the discipline mm -hmm. aspect of it. So where, so do you feel like maybe if you start right away or as soon as you get off the call, that would tame the discipline that you lack? 
Cause how do we fix the discipline that you at? Cause you about to go to Harvard, so ain't no ain't no slipping ain't up no, over there, bro. There's no slacking over there. Because the I remember one That's of the, the things fight. I told you about Harvard, I was like, yeah, congratulations on getting in, but you gotta remember, there's a kid who didn't get in. Yeah, and who's gonna, you know, you never know. He may watch this and be like, oh, this is the nigga who didn't get <laughs> who got in. Right. Lacks discipline and his hunger might outshine right. yours. So how do you how do you avoid that? Because for your acceptance, somebody got a denial and they might just work 10 times harder to take that spot that you got. That's very true. I will say that, um, I would say in to, in to, to answer that question, um, that I think though, though my discipline is like very different from mm. what the normal discipline is, I think there is a discipline, like there is a discipline to it, to mm-hmm. how I do things. It's just, I need to like fix it and tweak it. Mm-hmm. And to answer the question about like, if I like got off the phone and started it right then and there, I don't think it would change. I don't think it would change my discipline mm-hmm. so much as, to be honest, the time that I get it done. Mm-hmm. You know, like I might be able to do it. I and I might be able to do it in that time because the idea came to me as soon as we were on the phone. Mm-hmm. So some and that happens sometimes. Like sometimes, like like I might we might we might have a phone call mm-hmm. and you'd be like, "Yo, I want this type of logo. Mm-hmm. Um, this idea I have for it, and like I know you could do it. Just mm-hmm. like." Just like spruce it up. And then while you're talking to me, I have the ideas formulated in my head and I already know what to do. So as soon as we get off the phone, I start it. Mm-hmm. And like, that's ideal. I would love to have that for each client, but that's not the truth. You know, mm-hmm. sometimes it's like, it takes me a couple of days to like really wrap my head around what they ask for. Even right now, um, there's one logo that I'm just like, yo, I really don't know how to do this. Mm-hmm. Um, and I got off the phone with the person today, Saturday, um, two days ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and I still have not started anything, but I'm thinking about it. Mm-hmm. So where do you draw so your think, inspiration from? What inspires you? Everything. And being in quarantine is sucking the life out of me <laughs> because like, I, can't, I cannot draw inspiration from my crib. Mm. Um, so I try to draw inspiration from traveling. I try to draw inspiration from um, like just people that I meet, talking to them. Mm. Um, I try to draw my inspiration from things that I see. One of the like, weird things that I do... Um, it's like if I'm walking in the street and I see a building that has like a really nice font for their like their um, building name, mm-hmm. I like take a picture of it because I'm just like, yo, I don't know what font this is, but this shit is fire. Mm-hmm. Um, and so like I'll draw inspiration from stuff like that. Um, I also draw inspiration from um, like Instagram. There are a lot of like pages that um, do like really dope designs. Mm-hmm. And so like I'll go on those pages from time to time. I'll go on those pages from time to time and just, um, like, draw inspiration that way. Like, I'll be like, oh, this is cool. I could do something like this. And I'll, like, create my own version of it. Um, the, oh, are you scared of anybody saying um, that your logo is low-key plagiarized? Not at all. Because, and that's, that's the thing. Mm-hmm. So, with art, what I do is I don't take what people do and, like, create it for myself. Or, like, mm-hmm. I don't, like, take what people do and try to make it for myself. Mm-hmm. When it comes to logos especially, I try to um, I try to just use it as an inspiration for um, what my art could be. Mm-hmm. You know, like, this is a level of, like, what the art should look like. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily this is what my art should look like. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, this is the level that it should look like. You know, and so, like, the clean look, the professional mm-hmm. look, that's, where I, that's really where I got, like, my ideas for the minimal logos. Because I was looking at someone's page and I was like, yo, I want to make minimal logos too. Like, mm. this is clean. This is cool. Mm. Um, and so... So you, you, you inspire but don't imitate. I'm inspired but I don't imitate. God, yeah. That makes perfect sense, man. Thank you for coming, bro. Appreciate you, my yo, brother. Flapped facts. a couple times. What's all good? <laughs> we here live and direct with the best graphic designers in New York City. The best, oh the best graphic designer. I got you. Don't worry about it. Joe. We love you, bro. My man Joe is in the building, man. <laughs> I appreciate Shout out to Joe. Joe. Appreciate both of y'all for what, what, is, what is what is what is what is your relationship like, Joe? Um, with Joe, me and Joe. I think we, I, to me, I think we have a good relationship. We talk, we talk almost every day mm-hmm. um, about just like art stuff. Like mm-hmm. sometimes we just bounce ideas off of each other. Mm-hmm. I might send him an art piece that I'm making. Mm. Um, and then, like, he might have ideas for it, or he'll send me something, and I'll have ideas for it. Mm. Um, mm. So, so yeah. Joe, so basically, like, you ghostwrite yeah. a lot of well, Joe's stuff. He said, yeah. <laughs> we got that sound bite. That. We got that sound bite. It's lit. That's definitely not what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got the sound bite. Don't worry about Joe it. makes his own work. <laughs> um, Joe got partial I'm game. not taking credit for anybody's work. <laughs> I remember uh, when I was like, 
my last real relationship and me and Joe was getting like super close. She was like, I'm really jealous of, of you and your relationship with Kojo. Like he's a great guy. You treat him way better no. than you do me. <laughs> Damn. Damn. Like, Damn. I remember one time Damn. my phone was ringing and I'm like, uh, she's in the middle of telling me something. I'm like, nah, I got to take this. Uh, Damn. And she thought it was, it was important. Like that. I was like, yo, Joe, what's good, bro? Yeah, it's like that. <laughs> Ain't nothing, man. Damn. Ain't no chilling. <laughs> That's exactly how Joe talks. My bromance with Joe is disgusting. Damn, <laughs> I just, I just know me and Joe would never work because I can't be no bottom. <laughs> yeah, oh, we go. I think we're shutting the cameras off. <laughs> we're going to shut the cameras off. Singers is wild. Oh my god, nah, is sick, bro. <laughs> I appreciate, I appreciate you pulling you. Appreciate up, man. You. During this time like this, bro. Appreciate Facts. you. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Tell them where they can follow you, the website, and all absolutely. of that good stuff. Plug everything um, in. So you can definitely find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Zav Balan. Um, my website is Visuals of Zav. Um, definitely navigate towards the contact page. Um, mm. Hit me up. Um, I do logo design, cover art. Movie posters too. If you are, a, um, if you are a director, I actually had a couple people. Facts, who, um, yo, you the, uh, the one I think you did for Twilight. Is it Twilight? Um, uh, Moonlight. 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 That was my favorite um, one. That was badass, that. bro. That. that was. Ba- I was looking at it, and I'm like, damn, bro, Joe. I, I know, yo, bro. bro we've we, we, been doing this for a couple years, bro. <laughs> <laughs> the Twilight. The Twilight. The, the, the Twilight. Um, no, Moonlight. Yeah. When I saw that. That I wanted to fire, actually bro. send it to them, like, yo, yeah, next, next one, y'all gotta, y'all gotta, y'all gotta, this kid up, bro. That shit was yo, fire, bro. Yo, so, so, like, before I, like, finish plugging myself and stuff mm. like that, I do want to say that that's definitely <laughs> the next thing that I want to, hey, yeah. that's definitely the next thing that I want to do. Like, I'm trying to, like, get into, like, the movie, mm. the, the media and film, like, mm. world and, like, start doing, like, graphic design for, like, um, movies and stuff like that. That's definitely, like, the next step for me. Um, so that's honestly why I started doing the movie posters. Mm. Um, so yeah, you can find me. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, um, and then my website is Visuals of Zav. Um, yeah, I got two more questions Absolutely. before we dip. Being from Canarsie, right? How um, you know, seeing all the success that's coming out of there, whether it was Pop or or whoever for um. Who else is from Canarsie? Uh, Flip De Niro. Yeah. You know, how does it feel being a kid from Canarsie, seeing, like, the light shine on your area of Brooklyn? Man, yo, I had a, I had a conversation with this about... I had a conversation about this with someone um, who I'm actually going to be going to Harvard with. And because, like... They, Wait, there's they, another kid in Canarsie no, no, going no, to Harvard? Canarsie. Oh, oh, okay. Like, I've been networking with people. Oh, okay, okay. But, um, honestly, I feel like Canarsie has been, like, out of the spotlight for so long. Absolutely. So for me, seeing Pop Smoke, rest in peace, seeing mm. Pop Smoke like um, come to light and like just blow up, mm. it was everything to me. Like he shot the Welcome to the Party video like right down my block. And I was just like, yo, this is crazy to me. Like mm. this is amazing. And for me, it just makes me, it makes me feel good that people are actually starting to see that like there's definitely talent in Canarsie. Like we're mm. out here, we doing our thing, you know, like we might be inside all the time because it's, when you go to Canarsie, there's nothing to do out there. But um, I just think it's really, I think it's really great. And I think it's cool that people are starting to see that. Um, and just even as a, as a creative myself, I think I owe it to um, Canarsie. I feel like I owe it to like where I grew up and stuff like that to like actually be putting myself out there so people know um, you know, people know that like I'm from the floss. I'm doing like I, I'm from the floss and I'm doing this, which mm-hmm. is why in my bio I let people know I'm from specifically floss. from the floss. Mm-hmm. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> fucking hate this <laughs> ignorant bastard. But yeah, and the, and the final question: uh, yeah. What's a good guy? What's a good guy? I I, have, I do have a question. I do have an answer to this question. Um, I think a good guy is someone who. Um, who takes a look in the mirror mm. and confronts all the things that, um, you know, might hurt his ego. Mm. I feel like a good guy is someone who takes accountability, mm. someone who listens. Um, and I'm going to say this only because I feel like this is something that we should talk about, um, especially as men. But um, everything that I've been seeing um, in the last week with uh, God, God, and like all these other men that have been 
Um, Damn, you trying to get a suit? <laughs> he trying to get out of here. I'm sorry <laughs> for defamation of character. You say, say the accusers. I'm sorry. I'm no worry, we go. I'm gonna say, I said what I said. <laughs> I said what I said. <laughs> you said what I said. You said what I said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, so but I feel like with everything going on, I feel like a lot of a lot of men, mm-hmm. um, especially like I seen a lot of niggas get quiet on the mm-hmm. timeline mm-hmm. when that stuff started coming out, and I was like, this is mad interesting. Mm-hmm. Like y'all niggas need to like we need to like take a look in the mirror and like come to grips with the things that we let slide mm. or some of the things that some of us might have done. Mm. Hopefully it was hopefully it hasn't been so um, anybody I know, but like even mm. the shit that you let slide, even the things that you didn't So what if it is about, somebody you know? you know? How would you handle that? I yo I actually had that happen to me before. So um one time I was supposed to be working with this guy, right? Mm. He went to um he went to NYU. Um he like we weren't we weren't close but like we were like we were acquaintances and so mm. like I was supposed to be working with him. Mm. And then literally the the week that the same week that he hit me up to edit one of his mm-hmm. photos, um, like someone came forward about um, his behavior. Yes, and I was just like, "What the hell is going on?" And then he hit me up. He hit me up like after it like blew up. He hit me up like nothing was going on, and I was just like, "You cannot be serious right now. Mm-hmm. Like you can't be serious. Like you're literally like people are people are accusing you of um, sexual misconduct or." having predatory behavior and like you're literally hitting me up as if everything is fine and I'm like I don't play that shit now mm. I'm gonna bring a little close to you what yeah. if it's what if it's Rob mm. Rob I would cut off Rob <laughs> I would cut off Rob mm-hmm. I would be his ass I would be his ass I would be his uh-huh. ass for his <laughs> nah, nah, you have nah. to. You have no, to. Put nah, for real. You have for to real. put people in the shoes was, of their closest yeah, Rob, friends Rob is my best friend and so if it was Rob first of all first of all like I said earlier, I would take a look in the mirror and try to f- understand why I didn't see it, mm-hmm. you know? And I think that's the first part for me. It's like, mm. why, wasn't this, why wasn't this something I saw? And I, I definitely know that there is something that we need to address before I say something like mm-hmm. that because men don't, talk about, men don't talk about the shit that's happening in their lives to their friends, like the real shit, like their sex lives and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And so for me, it's like, why didn't I, why didn't I see that coming? Yeah, and but so, you can't beat yourself up about I, it. Yeah, yeah, like I can't beat myself up over it, but... You still have to think about it. Like, you still I? have to think about it to some degree. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so for me, like that would be the first step. Then I'll be his ass for mm-hmm. cause it's like, what's wrong with you? Like what you want? Mm-hmm. And then it's like, if that if he's fine with living that true if he's fine with living that life, mm-hmm. that's not someone I can that's not someone I can be around. Mm-hmm. Like I don't want to associate myself with people who that's um true. who that's live true. that life mm-hmm. or have those tendencies because one, that hurts my brand. Like mm-hmm. imagine, imagine like I said that last. You know what I mean? Imagine you have somebody on y'all show that people like. We did. We did, bro. We did, bro. We had bro. to get rid of the episode. <laughs> it's not funny, but damn, bro. Like, yeah, episode ninety nine you know what I mean? of what's a good so, guy like, is no y'all longer around. Saying. Y'all get what I'm saying? It's like you don't want to associate people with that brand, mm-hmm. with your brand. So it's like. I cannot be around it. I can't be around you, bro. I'm sorry. Yeah, nah, man. But thank, thank if you it was coming, Rob, bro. yeah. Got beat his ass. I ain't mad at you. Right, that's man. the homie, though. I love Rob. I'm plucking him. Rob's dr- um, Rob walks drunk <laughs> with friends. Hey, hey, that, that's not a good oh. show to plug. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. I'm gonna Drinking that responsibly with friends, Rob. Drink water. It's not. Rob. It's not. Wait, they gonna have to <laughs> You're right. Drink responsibly with friends, Rob. Please, man. man. Brother, but not nah, shout out to Rob. Yeah. Shout out to you, man. To Rob. Congratulations you, man. on getting on getting in the Harvard. That's and the a website. huge achievement. Thank you. Your Thank website, you. your art is amazing. Thank you for coming today, man. It's been an honor and a pleasure, bro. Hey, guess what? Thank I you. think you can follow LA somewhere. You can follow me somewhere. No, nah, yeah, Peasley. follow Don. Yeah. Don Peasley, D O M P E Z O Y. Don the camera guy. Facts. Uh, mastering my craft at uh, Stay Focus LA. Um, you can follow me at Stay Focus LA too. That's my website, Mastering he, My Craft. He also has Fa- OnlyFans where he plays Facts. suitcase in his drawers. Facts. My, <laughs> only, my, my only friends oh. is Rain On Me. Uh, <laughs> um, Rain and yo, on yo, me. Yo. I'm gonna just. <laughs> yo. I'm gonna just. Uh, Rain I'm on just Thursdays. Leave that alone. <laughs> <laughs> Rain on. But yeah, but um, <laughs> facts. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, am I leaving anything out? Nah, man. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Rain. Thank you, Benny. Benny. Everybody in the, the room. Order. 
man. And I'm proud of you, man. You're Thank doing you. a good you thing. It, I really appreciate you that. You're, it, you're making you're making you're making a lot of people proud. And uh, as a black man, I'm I'm super proud of you, man. I don't hear that a lot, so I appreciate y'all seeing that. Like, really what you mean you don't hear that? A, what you like, I don't hear people you? saying like people like I'm proud of you. Like oh, I hear like man. people saying this nah, is dope, this is cool. Nah, but nah, I don't hear a lot of people saying flowers, bro. So I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Congratulations on all the good work, man. God is good. You are watching a master at work.